might have been helpful for Blaine in writing these three things down. That we can look at as a reference. A reference, and if you had looked at this reference, what <coughs> mistake might you not have made? Uh, you didn't have plug in the wrong number for the five. Which number did you plug in wrong? saw these three things, he divided four out of all of them. Not just these two, which, which uh, students are often tempted to do, just crossing out those eights. Okay? But that wouldn't, it just wouldn't work. Okay? The, the reason why is that if you cancel things out in a fraction, in the numerator and denominator, it's because one is dividing the other, or another way of saying it, the numerator and denominator have a common factor. Okay? But this is an eight times four root three, it's 8 plus, and 8 minus 4 root 3. Okay? So 8 is not necessarily a factor of the whole thing. But 4 is a factor of 8, and of 8, and of 4. And so we can cancel a 4 from all of them, divided 4 out of all of them. Another thing that's important is Blaine, Blaine didn't try to do that, didn't try to cancel things when there was the square root with just like the number is inside the square root. He made sure to simplify the square root first. You cannot cancel numbers from outside the square root with numbers that are inside the square root. They're not in the same realm. This is like in another dimension, the square root dimension. Okay? So we actually need to find the square roots of, of factors of 48. So we simplify it by writing the square root of, if you want to do the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, the square root of 16 is 4. Now, that is the number 4. This is really not 48. This is 48 inside the square root. We're looking for the square root of 48, which is some number that's a decimal that goes on forever and never repeats. But if we simplify it, we're able to take some numbers out of the square root of 4. And now they're all in the same dimension. This one is off in the nether. So. Okay. Um, so we divided every term by 4. All. Or incorrect, wait, I should say incorrectly. Incorrectly. Renee forgets to do one important thing at the very beginning. What does she forget? Let's take a look. Let's write it down. Well, I have a question oh. on the other one. Oh, on the other one, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. So, what if, like, there was a 7 in it and you couldn't simplify it anymore? Like, if this was just a square root of 7? Yeah. Uh, then you'd be done. So, well, could you, like, simplify the Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So let's kind of block this out and let's just make up what you're saying. So this is completely unrelated. If somebody's related, maybe even knows, you know, unrelated to this problem. Um, but if it were something like eight plus or minus the square root of seven, which can't be simplified over eight, this is a really good question. We can't simplify the eight with the eight. Here's why. When we simplify a fraction, which we're, we're canceling out common factors between the numerator and the denominator. If you're trying to cancel out something that's 8 plus another thing, you need to be, write it, be able to write it as, if you want to cancel the 8, 8 times something. Basically, you need to be able to undistribute or factor out an 8 from the numerator to do that. In this case, we could do that. We could write it that way. We could, we're, we're canceling out a 4 here. We could write the numerator as, just like as an in-between step, Four, undistribute a four. Can we undistribute a four from these terms? What would we have inside the parentheses? Okay. You could two. We need to get an eight, so we need to multiply by two to get eight. Okay, one. So plus or minus one times the square root of three. Yeah. So if we distribute this, we'll get eight and four root three. Down here we have. <coughs> we'd like to see four times two. So now we truly can't say 4 divided by 4, because this is really 4 over 4 times 2 plus or, uh, two plus or minus root 3 over 2. And you can see how now these are two separate fractions. This one is 4 divided by 4. That's just 1. That's why those cancel out. Right? We shortcut that a lot because we don't want to write all those steps over and over. But we should be able to, to at least say, well, if I want to cancel something out, it needs to be that times something else. And if it's not, if it's plus or minus, then I need to undistribute it if I'm going to have a whole bunch of that. Yeah? So the only way you can actually get the denominator and the numerator to cancel out yeah. is if you multiply it and then put it in parentheses. If you, yeah, if you can write it that way. If you cannot write it that way, don't even try. All right. You're just done. Okay? Just circle the answer right there. Yep. You would be like this one, you'd be done. That's your answer. No simplifying. No canceling out. So uh, maybe you can help me, because uh, this is just a, every year, it is a challenge for me to get this to stick. So what's, what's telling you that you cannot cancel that 8 out? What's, what are you going to tell yourself to remind yourself not to cancel that 8? Whereas in this case, you can cancel out a 4 from all of these. Maybe okay. 1 over the 7? Yeah. Okay, there's a 1 in front of the 7, and so you'll always get the same number. You'll always get eight. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean by that? I'm just saying, like, say if you put a one there, uh -huh. you can't, uh, you can't, the, uh, uh, simplify it anymore. Okay, you can't simplify it anymore if there's a one in front. Um, what's making you pay attention to this as like its own separate entity? Square root. Times. Square root. Square root. Square root times. Um. Well, the fact that we can't simplify it and get numbers out of the square root, yeah, true. Um, here we're canceling uh, common factors of 8 and 8. But we're also paying attention to this guy right here. Why are we paying attention to this? Why don't we just say 8 and 8? What, what is like making these be different things? Well, 4 square root 3 would also be divided by 8. So you can't take uh -huh. Okay. Eight out of eight or so what's telling you that this and this separately are like they're both being divided by eight? Plus or minus. The plus is a minus. So that's this one's making this be a plus minus. Not plus and minus, but a plus or a minus. They're all pluses and all minuses. They're like each term you could think of as you know, pay attention close attention to this. Each term is separated by a plus sign, always a plus sign. Because a term is either positive or negative. We're always adding numbers, whether we're adding positive numbers or adding negative numbers. So the term itself is either positive or negative. Okay. So if they're separated by plus signs, whether we're adding positive numbers or adding negative numbers, if they're separated by a plus sign, every one of them needs to get divided by the denominator. Okay. Okay, so if it was like a 6 in the square root, you couldn't divide it by 2, could you? Like this? Like, yeah, if that was a 6. Right, if that was a 6, no. 
you have to be able to simplify the square root, separate them, and then get some, something outside of the square root. Okay. Now, if all of these numbers were square roots, then now numbers inside of square roots could interact with numbers inside of square roots uh, as far as division and multiplication. Yes? Good question. Um, so here, what does Renee forget to do? Just one simple thing at the very beginning. Forgets one really tiny but important detail. Two minus. Seven into a positive six. Um, uh, right at the beginning, right there, the negative seven. And it said well, that no. See if you if you look at the quadratic formula, it's written over here on this board. Yeah. It's negative b. Oh, whatever b is, make it negative. Now, if b <coughs> is itself negative, yeah, then negative negative will be a positive. Oh, okay. But if b is positive, and we make we put a negative in front of it, it's a negative. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. So uh, add three x both sides. Why would she do that? Make it equal to zero. Uh, get zero on okay. for this problem. She would add three x to both sides. Two three x. Okay. Let's pretend like that wasn't a mistake. Let's pretend like there's some other quadratic equation that we would plug these numbers into. We would plug all these numbers into and, and that would be the process. Uh, how does she get these two solutions? This one and this one. She's here and then all of a sudden she has two. So uh, write down for yourself in your notes. How does she do that? So what's what happened? How did she get those two different solutions? Tyler? Because the solution can be a positive or a negative. Right? Or at least there's part of it that can be positive or negative. Yeah. Right? So we can add 17 to negative 7, or we can subtract 17 from negative 7, and that makes the two different solutions. Negative 7 plus 17 is 10, and yeah. 10 over 24 simplifies down to 5 over 12, and negative 7 minus 17 is negative 24, divided by 24 is negative 1. Okay. This is kind of a tough, uh, tough one that you get. A nice answer like negative one kind of feels like you did something right. Doesn't it? But she forgot about that adding three X. So the two solutions just you know, the plus and minus are the thing that would give you the two solutions. The plus minus is not one number that is weird and positive and negative at the same time, it's two numbers, a positive seventeen and a negative seventeen. Jaden actually has done his work correctly come to the wrong solution. Now this is the yellow sticky, which reminds me that there's a little, you know, new piece that we didn't quite get to in class. It's called a discriminant. But you don't even need to know that if in my instructions I told you to just find the number that's in the square root. That's what we call the discriminant. Okay? So rather than telling you the words you don't know the definition of, I give you the definition. Find the number that is in the square root, only find that. Um, and then just do some reasoning to decide what kind of solutions you're going to get. So you think about it. If you got zero in the square root, also keep in mind that this is part of the formula. There's more to the formula. What would it mean to you if you got a zero in there? How many solutions would you get? And uh, why has Jaden come to the wrong conclusion? All right, what do we say about that? Got a zero in the, in the square root, so the discriminant is zero. It's not the square root of zero. So uh, Jaden says that means there's no solutions because you've got a zero in there. Does that seem to make sense? Well, zero is a solution, so she has one solution, not the solution. Uh, zero <laughs> is the solution? Uh, yes. yes. Zero is the solution. Zero is a solution. Yeah. Zero solution? The number
zero zero solution? Yep, come on. Uh, Everybody agree with that? Equal to zero. Like if you plug in zero for x, this is the solution. Mm -hmm. Nobody has anything? Tyler's noticing if you put zero in for x's, you don't get zero, you get 16. Yeah. Well, but I didn't mean that in this solution, x is equal to zero. Okay. And likewise, that x can be equal to zero. That it is possible for zero to be a solution. Well, the, the thing about what you're saying is, and, and this goes back to the definition of solution, which talked about, we, we talked about. A solution, this equation has uh, maybe as many as two solutions. So we might have uh, a two real solutions, two imaginary solutions, maybe one solution, okay? But a solution to this equation is a number, and when you take that number, the solution, how do you know it's the solution? I've got it in my hand. How am I going to prove that it's the solution to this equation? You can plug it into the problem. Plug it right there into x. If this side does not come out to be zero, it's not a solution. The zero is a solution. So that number zero is not a solution. So we put zero in there, zero minus zero plus 16 is 16, not zero. It doesn't come out to be zero. So he's still not correct that there's no solutions, but it's also not correct that zero is the solution. Um, there's an advantage. Okay, and so expound on that. Well, because if you Right. Remember the rest of the equation is uh, negative b over 2a, and then we have this discriminant part that's plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now what, what Jaden here has found, and correctly, is that this number inside the square root is 0. So what we're adding and subtracting to get our, quote, two solution is 0. We take whatever this turns out to be and add 0, it doesn't change anything, that's just negative b up there. We just get negative b over 2a. And if we subtract 0, we still get just negative b over 2a, whatever that turns out to be. And so when we add 0 and we subtract 0, we've only gotten one number twice. We only have one solution. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So a discriminant of 0 is 1. We're adding and we're subtracting zero. It's not changing the value of the numerator at all. Okay, so we've discussed about how we can look at the number inside the square root and it can, can tell us about the solution. We can just find out if you ever get a zero and there you only get one solution, whatever negative b over 2a is, that's it. So just take a second here. Why do you think the number inside the square root, this thing here, the zero in this case, uh, why does it have this name? Why is it called the discriminant? So now we're turning on our English brain and thinking about words and their definitions and the roots of words and trying to get your drugs into your particular root if you're like thinking about that. What kind of thoughts do you have about why that might be called Think about anything about the word discriminant? Any thoughts come to mind? Discrimination. Discrimination. Right? The discriminant and discrimination seem to maybe have the same root. What does discriminate mean? Yeah? To treat someone or something differently than you treat other people or other things. Like discriminate against someone because of their skin color is treated differently because of their skin color. Um say discriminate against, we are, that has a negative connotation. Against is the bad part. Discriminate, though actually, it's not, it's not really a negative thing. It's not even about, you, could, you, you might correct me by looking this up, but I think it's even more general than that. Discriminate, listen to me, just means to kind of 
separate into groups. Right? Now, if I separate you from a group of white people, a group of black people, and I treat one group poorly, I would say I've discriminated against them. Right? Right? I separate them in groups. So, that's right. I just need to separate into groups. Like that. Okay. So, um, so we definitely don't want to discriminate against people. But discriminating is just separating into groups. What does this discriminant allow us to do? What groups does it allow us to separate? Solutions. Solutions. Different kinds of solutions. Different numbers of solutions. Okay. So. That discriminant. What, if it's zero, how many solutions do we find that we get? One. One. What about if it's a positive in there? What kinds of solutions do we get? Two. Two solutions. And how will that compare to the kinds of solutions you get if there's a negative in the square root? You can get uh, imaginary solutions. Imaginary solutions. So we can get real solutions. Well, let's say we can get imaginary solutions if if it's a negative. Negative in the square root of the discriminant <laughs> is a negative. Uh, we get real solutions if it's not negative. And in the very special case that it's zero, we get any solution one real solution. Um, so it discriminates between different kinds of solutions. found the correct discriminant, she's doing good work today. Uh, she's come to the correct conclusion. How, first of all, does Janice know that the solutions will be imaginary? We'll go ahead and open that up for discussion. Why, how does she know that? imaginary numbers that'll work. So we get imaginary solutions. So the discriminant is negative. Right, there's a couple letters before that. How does Janice know that there will be two solutions and not just one solution? Just by the way. Yes, we got the plus minus part of the formula. Plus or minus means we can add the negative, the square root of negative 20, or we can subtract the square root of negative 20. Alrighty. Are there any questions in the homework? Pretty simple process using the quadratic formula. Get numbers in there. Alright. If you have questions, ask them. If you don't, ask them. Did you say? <laughs> oh, correction. correction. I got you.
is where our work differs from their work, it equals, what's A? One. One. And B is? And C is? Be careful. Six. We should subtract two before we even start and get six. What do you want to bet that's their mistake? Okay, let's see. Uh, negative b, that's negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4. Uh, a is 1 times c is 6 over 2 times a. Oh, yeah. There it is. Their c is 8 when it should be 6. That's it. Two questions. The, the 4. 4? Four? I think it's going to. Am I right there when they put negative? That's four. So this is negative uh, b, b squared, a, c. The four is part of it. Oh. Yeah. Right. When you look over there, negative four a c. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? We don't all, all know how motorcycles work. They jump through the <coughs> air all the time. Uh, jumps ramp 20 feet off the ground to another ramp 20 feet off the ground. The jump between the ramps can be modeled by this thing, where x is the horizontal distance between the water and the height above the ground feet. What's the motorcycle's height r? R. Let's see. So it's the height above. can be a lot of things.
Yeah, we know the height. We don't know the distance between them. <coughs> We can't solve for x though if it's equal to y. It should be equal to something. Okay. Is it equal to 20? Like, because y is equal to 20. <coughs> so what? Why 20 again? So, well, you just plug 20 into y and then you subtract 20 from the other side. And why 20 though? Why did you choose 20? Because that's well, the, number two. the height, right? That's the height of the ramp. So when he starts out, he's 20 feet high, and then when he ends, he's also 20 feet high, right? So if we uh, set it equal to 20, if we take negative 1 over 640x squared plus 1 fourth x plus 20 and set it equal to 20, then we're finding the x values, right? Zero, x equals zero is back here somewhere, right? <laughs> so we'll find the x value that is at the edge of this ramp and the x value that's at the edge of this ramp because we just said we want the height to be 20. We want to know what x values give, or, or yeah, what x values give a height of 20. Does that make sense? So we're solving for x now. And if we subtract 20 on both sides, we get negative 1 over 640 x squared plus 1 fourth x equals 0. And that gives us now. We solve for x. Can we plug it into the current formula? We could. We could let a be negative 1 over 640. We could let b be 1 over 4. We could let c be 0. Okay. But we don't want to forget our, our training. What about if we subtract 1 fourth from this? Subtract 1 fourth. If we subtract 1 fourth from this, <coughs> no. No. They're not like terms. You can't subtract 1 fourth from 1 fourth x. But. Don't forget that we have other ways of solving these, and sometimes they're easier, they're a little bit faster. If we undistribute an x, we have a number times another number equals zero. Why is that to our advantage? If we distribute this x, we get x squared. We get one fourth x. Because you can use the square root. we get a number, this number, times this number mm -hmm. equals zero. If we multiply two numbers together, we get zero. It's guaranteed that one one fourth is one solution. There's two solutions. And so I'm hiding this these numbers from you. I just multiplied two numbers together and got zero by multiplying those two numbers together. What can you tell me about those numbers? One of those numbers is zero. One of those numbers is zero. Okay, so that's well, that two. One of those numbers is zero. Either this is zero, or this big old thing is zero. That's an easy one to solve. That's just that's all you solve. That's the zero. Now we're gonna solve this one for x. Subtract one fourth from both sides. What? You guys think the reciprocal of negative one four over four and multiply uh, and divide by on the other side. <coughs> multiply by the reciprocal over here and divide by the reciprocal over here. Well, and multiply when you after you did the reciprocal multiply. So take the reciprocal of negative one fourth and multiply by the reciprocal of negative one fourth. Yeah. What's that going to do? It'll give you one number. It'll give you 
give you one here, but over here will it be the x by itself? Yeah. Well, well then you have to share with that thing. So you say multiply by negative four over one. I'm uh, then uh, well, yeah, like you said that yeah, before. Yeah. Uh, so I just changed my mind that you have to do it the one sixth, uh, one six hundred and forty. Yeah. One over six hundred and forty. You want to do the reciprocal of that one? Yes. So that you get the uh, so you get the x by itself. Okay, we want x by itself, and that will do that. If we're not sure, we can just try to multiply it out, see if it works. Well, here we're going to get negative times negative is positive. Uh, you're going to get 640 over 640 is just one. Positive more times x is x. Okay, we got negative times negative, that's positive. 640 divided by 4 is. 160. Yeah. So 160. So I guess this function is uh, is set up so that x zero is right here, x equals zero right here, and x equals 160 right here. And so what's the distance between the two ramps? 160. Uh, what is the horizontal distance h the motorcycle has traveled when it reaches its maximum height? Just be half of 160, so 80. 160, 80. What is the max the, the uh, motorcycle's maximum height k above the ground? Is it at its maximum height at 160? No. Right in the middle at 80? Yeah. Okay. So we've got this parabola, this is par para a parabola <coughs> shape, and so it's, it's symmetrical. It's 20 feet off the ground here, 20 feet off the ground here. So right in the middle should be where the vertex of the parabola is, or the motorcycle's maximum height at 80. So what do we do with 80? Plug it in for x. At 80 feet uh, for x, it should tell us how high the, uh, the motorcycle is. So y equals negative 1 over 6, uh, 640 times 80 squared plus 1 fourth x. Sorry, sorry, it's 80 yeah. squared. Divided by 4 is 20 is 6400 divided by 640. Maximum height 